Welcome back to another episode of Mailbag Monday. I'm Nick Williams and it's so good to have you. Today we're going to be talking about ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic tax codes and how they unlock the key to your content marketing. Sounds weird I know, but stick around. So getting into the content strategy portion of this, let's look at what we've called at DeepBridge the content ladder execution. And this execution you can use for any of your core concepts in your business, your products, your services, whatever the case may be, you can use the content ladder execution across the board. So take your main product or service, whatever you're highlighting, whatever you're focusing on, and this is going to be core concept, core product, core service, think about it like that. And you have these other subcomponents that ladder into your core concept. So instead of looking at your content strategy as a some giant big ordeal and, and honestly sometimes a mess if you look at it like that, don't look at it like that. Take it as, you know, I have one major thing I want to deliver on. You can break that down into three to five subcomponents and that's what I would do and make a list. You, you're selling X. How do you break X down into X sub one, X sub two, X sub three, and X sub one, two, and three, these are gonna be your core concepts. So like the Rosetta Stone, how it's this giant block of things you can't read. But when you break it down, it's actually three subcomponents in three different languages. Using the cartouches, using different pieces from other languages, we can piece them all together to one giant picture. Now that giant picture can ladder into whatever we need it to be. That's our call, that's your call on an execution standpoint, whatever you think makes sense to your business. But use these three to break down major, major core principles and ideas and concepts that ladder into your main concept. When you do this, you're able to drive understanding, you're able to drive education, and you're able to increase those conversions. So if your consumer ultimately understand how your goods, products, services, how they actually work, the better they can understand how they work, the more likely they are to be, you know, to try them, to be keen on at least giving them a shot. And so it's this concept works very well and it seems simple, but take your major products or services, break them down into sub core components that drive understanding at three or three to five different levels. You don't want to do too many. But at the same time, if you don't do enough, it's too much at once. You know, you're looking at a block of gibberish. So that's how you create your content. And, you know, there's a lot of other things you could do tactically, and we'll touch on them briefly. But, you know, the first step is really going to be ideation. So it's going to be what, what are you actually focusing on in your strategy? What do you want to talk about? What do you want to push? But from the strategic standpoint of inbound marketing and content creation, you need ideations. You need to understand what it is you want to talk about. And once you have what it is you want to talk about, you want to break them down in these sub these subcomponents, X sub one, X sub two, X sub three. Then you can use things like Google Keyword Planner. Google Keyword Planner will help you understand where the trends and it'll give you an analysis of what your your whatever industry or topic you're in. So this week's mailbag Monday comes from Teresa, who's a CEO and founder of an apparel company. And she was asking about how do you deliver better content um, based on some of the principles we've been talking about. It looks like her team, um, she's sold on content, but she's not really sure. How do you not just run and, and throw things against the wall and see what sticks like spaghetti? How do you actually deliver more scientific approach to content that converts. What you, you know, depending on what you're doing, you could be typing in apparel in Google Keyword Planner. You could be looking at how are people actually thinking and asking questions. How are they typing in long tail keywords, short tail keywords. So you want to find those long and short tail keywords and understand what your customer is saying specifically. What's the what's the verbiage? What's the rhetoric? How are they talking about it? So use Google Keyword Planner, you know, strategically to better understand once you have your core concepts, X sub one, X sub two, X sub three, then you can use those keywords to actually talk in the language that your consumer types in. Because at the end of the day, SEO is all about how people type. You know, if they're not, if, if you're an apparel company, they're not even saying the word apparel, they're saying clothes. That's a big miss, right? You have to understand that. Google Keyword Planner gives you that. It also helps you understand, you know, how are people bidding? Are they, is this an expensive keyword? If there's no money in it, is it something that you should be pursuing? If no one's bidding on it, it's technically means that it's not 
exactly how your consumer is talking, or there is a massive opportunity. So you need to understand, are other companies not bidding on this because it's not a good idea or because you found something that they're missing? But ultimately, it comes down to, do you understand your customer and how do they talk? So Google Keyword Planner is a great way to drive an even more calculated and even more directed execution of these sub-core components that ladder in. So a, another form uh, that you should be focusing on, another form of ideation, is BuzzSumo. That is another uh, tactical thing you could be doing. So BuzzSumo is a way for you to not only look at the pieces of content you want to create. So if you want to talk about apparel, BuzzSumo will tell you what your competition is actually talking about. What are some of the most ranked and linked, uh, the most highly ranked and, and best linked articles in the business? What are their titles? What are their H sub two headers? What are their H one titles, title tags? So BuzzSumo is a great way to get very analytical uh, and to get some more of that uh, quantifiable uh, evidence and, and information and insight about your content creation strategy execution. So it'll give you a lot of things you can use internally for yourself, but it'll also give you a peek under the hood at what your competition is doing, what's working in the industry, and what other places you could just go write. And it's actually a good place to start if you don't even know what to write about. Just go to BuzzSumo and look at your industry, and you can look at what are the most, you know, what are the most talked about, what are the most loved blogs in the industry, and just essentially go use that as a way to say I'm gonna make I'm gonna take this article and make it a little bit better don't copy it but you know take that article and how can you basically twist that so that your audience actually enjoys it and use that content that that strategy is more of a way to to help you with your ideation process and then you tweak, tweak and change that depending on what you want to talk about what you're trying to achieve so the second thing you need to be focusing on in uh, the the content ladder execution is essentially like we talked about this ladder. So now that you got your ideation, you need to create this ladder. And so once you have created this ladder, you know, made what are what are these key concepts? So what are these And you could have multiple you know, you can have multiple key products, key services, whatever idea you want to be talking about. Um, so you can have multiple things you want to be pushing and then break each of these down. So like at Deep Bridge Consulting, we have three to five principles we're always talking about each week. So this week in Mailbag Monday, Whiteboard Wednesday and Funnel Friday, we will be talking about, you know, you may not actually see it, but you know, now that we're talking about it here, we can kind of unveil it and say every week it's not just, we're just guessing. So if we're talking about content here, the Funnel Friday will be about the content. Whiteboard Wednesday will touch loosely content. And so you could be looking at what are your products, your services, your ideas, what are something that's, what's something that's significant in your business, break it down into sub-components, and these are your pieces of content. So once you've got your ideation, once you've got your ladder created, then it's just all about publishing. And so we actually talked about that last Wednesday. Um, and you could have the best content ladder in the world. You could have the best keyword research. But if you're not publishing at the end of the day, no one's seeing it, right? Like it, people have to see your content. People have to share it. It has to be picked up uh, by a, a lot of different people. A lot of different eyeballs have to see it. Because ultimately what you want is to be indexed. You want to be ranked. And the more you're ranked, the more you're indexed, the more people will see it organically. And the more people that are seeing it organically, the more you're going to have uh, the ability to convert qualified leads, the more you're going to be on page one. So you're just increasing the chances that your information gets seen. So the better job you do on the back end, by the time it actually, the snowball gets down the hill, by the time it actually gets seen by uh, a large swath of people, you're going to be in a good position uh, at scale for people to see this and say, look, this is something I'm interested in. This works. I want to, you know, come to your, I want to purchase X. I want to invest in Y. Um, so I want to join your platform. So the content ladder execution is a great way to not only keep straight and to have an actual planned out methodical approach to your content. So just remember those three things. You've got your ideation process. You've got understanding what are your keywords. You can go to BuzzSumo. You can go to Google Keyword Planner. Um, you can do a lot of these things. You need to create your content ladder. 
So your content ladder, again, think about the Rosetta Stone. How can you be mirroring that concept to say, look, I've got this major product service that I want to push. Let me break it down in these subcomponents and then ladder each of those subcomponents to create a well-rounded, all-encompassing strategy about X, major, you know, major product X. And now you've got these other different dynamics that lead to, to you know, different articles, different blogs. You could be linking to one cornerstone piece of content. And now anyone who's interested in X, you have a hyper, hyper targeted path to purchase through a very guided content path, essentially. Um, if they follow that content path, they're going to be extremely well versed in your products and services. They're going to be very qualified and they're going to be ready to buy if you lead them down that path. But if you don't have this ladder, you just throw them this major piece of content, it's going to be overwhelming, right? Even if, you know, at the end of the day, Today, three to five hundred word articles don't work anymore. Just you know, just trying to hit SEL. You have to deliver powerful, valuable concepts and blogs and articles. And to do that, you need to create a good experience. So your customer experience isn't just online, offline, you know, behavior. It's actually how they con- it's actually how they consume information. So give guide their path. Make it clear. And make it so that if they follow your path, they are the most educated and well-versed, ready-to-purchase consumers that have come through your funnels. So just remember that concept, remember those key principles, and you'll be in a really good position to deliver a highly targeted, highly controlled, very quantifiable, very researched, and honestly, a very robust um, content delivery plan that converts more of your customers. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions about the Rosetta Stone period, you know, it, I'll include this actually in a Mailbag Monday article. Um, I'll give you the inspiration video we used to, if you're into that sort of thing, if you want to learn more about the Rosetta Stone, I'll include the transcription of the Rosetta Stone itself. But uh, if you want to just hear more about Mailbag Monday and what we're doing, um, make sure to subscribe. You can actually submit your question and each week we'll pick someone. So again, thank you, Teresa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And hopefully this helps you with um, what you're doing at your company. I know we've, we've gone back and forth, so I'm excited to actually dig in. So, you know, if you're someone who's subscribing, you don't actually have to do anything other than uh, check out our content we have free versions of this of course um, but uh, if you're if you're seeing this then you're a premium member and uh, we have a lot of ways we can work together but otherwise just keep checking it out keep sending your submissions in and uh, if this is your jam we'll see you back here next Monday but again remember we've got whiteboard Wednesday coming up which is gonna be a really good one this week uh, we've got funnel Friday coming up uh, which again is gonna be a really good one I'm not gonna unveil what that one is until whiteboard Wednesday but um, we look forward to seeing you and hopefully this content is valuable and we're going to keep doing this for you. So we will see you hopefully on Wednesday, but if not, hopefully Friday and in the very least next Monday. Thanks.